Hello there and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Michelle Emerson and I'm a fourth grade teacher in Maryland. In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing my top seven tips or pieces of advice for teachers who are in college. Now this video is going to be geared toward individuals who are in college to become a teacher but haven't quite yet started their student teaching. I do have a video coming next week where I share my top seven tips and pieces of advice for teachers who are currently student teaching. So if that's you, make sure you check out that video. But if you are still in college, maybe you just enrolled in college or even if you're in high school but you know you wanna go into teaching, this video is for you. Tip number Number one is to find opportunities to work with kids or students. The best way to learn is through experience. And even though you will learn a lot in your classes in college, you are gonna learn so much more from actually working hands-on with students. So find as many opportunities as you can in order to get that hands-on experience. If your college has some sort of education club or teaching club, make sure that you join it. And if you don't have that, try to start one at your college. I went to college at Salisbury University and I ended up joining their education club my first year there. By the second year, I actually was serving as the vice president of the club. Not only is it a great resume builder and it's something that you can put on future job applications, but it also gives you that hands-on experience. I know that our education Education Club did a lot of events on campus for the faculty's kids or even neighborhood kids. So try to get as involved as you can. You also can get that hands-on experience by doing tutoring, whether it's paid or volunteer, or even substitute teaching. I actually never worked as a substitute, but I did volunteer tutor some local students at a nearby church. So try to find those opportunities where again, you're able to work with kids, you're able to work with students and start to get that experience. You can even ask nearby schools. I guarantee you there is at least one teacher at a nearby school who would be willing to let you come in and volunteer just so that you can kind of observe and start working with maybe small groups of students. If you are still in high school, I highly recommend that. See if you can partner up with a local elementary school. I know, at least personally, our high schools always got out earlier than the elementary schools. So see if you can spend that last hour of the day at a local elementary school volunteering. Tip number two is to listen observe and take notes. Now when I say listen and observe, I'm actually talking about a lot of different groups of people that you may be interacting with. You should be listening and observing your professors. You should be listening and observing from your fellow classmates. You should be listening and observing any mentor teachers that you might work with. And you should be listening and observing your students that you work with. I know my professors who had previously been classroom teachers would constantly tell us stories about their experiences and a lot of those I still remember to this day and they benefited me once I got in the classroom. I remember one of my professors telling us how important it was to befriend the custodians. She had an occurrence where she was after school having a conference which started to go south and the custodian actually had to come in and essentially rescue her. So any little tidbits of wisdom or experience that your professors do share with you, make sure that you listen to it and then take note. I recommend having a notebook so that any of these types of stories or little things that you wanna remember, you can write down because you're gonna learn so much from your first year in college to your last year in college. So make sure you have a place to store that information and be able to remember it. If you don't wanna keep a physical notebook, you could keep a note in your notes app on your phone or a Google Doc. Those are especially helpful because you can also add in images. You also should be taking as many pictures during this time as you can. If you have a field experience where you're going in and you're observing in a classroom, ask the mentor teacher if you can take photos and those can be things that you hold on to and remember when you do get into your own classroom. I also mentioned listening and observing your fellow classmates. I know when I was in college, we had a lot of experiences where we had to actually teach a lesson to the class as if they were students and I would see things that other classmates of mine were doing and I would take note of that. You have to start developing your own style as a teacher 
character. You're never going to be exactly like someone else and that's okay, but you can take these little bits from what you see others doing and use that to develop your own style. But that does bring me to tip number three, which is to take as many pictures as possible. And when I say pictures, I'm not referring to like you going out in college. I am referring to pictures that are going to help you when you get into your own classroom. Honestly, I wish I had taken so many more photos during my field experience than what I did. And now I look back and there's things that I remember, but I don't have a photograph in order to recall it fully. So if I could go back to those first few classrooms that I was placed in when I was just sitting and observing, I really wish that I had more photographs from that time. You can create an album on your phone in order to organize them all, or even create a folder on Google Drive. Plus, that's going to help you when it comes time to create a portfolio, which a lot of colleges do require. You will have those photographs that you can pull from and add in. Tip number four is to keep as many resources as you can. As you start creating these lessons and activities and games for your classes, save everything. Even if you don't think you're going to teach that grade level, or you don't think you're going to teach that subject, or you don't think you're ever going to use that lesson again, still hold on to it. Because when the time comes, it's going to be helpful for you to be able to look back on everything that you've created. In one of my field placements, I was actually working with a little girl after school and tutoring her. I ended up creating this like pizza game thing where I had pizza and she had to put different toppings on it. I want to say it was like a phonemic awareness game. I don't really remember now, but that was actually something I ended up using when I started teaching second grade and I was able to use it with my students who needed it. And I was so grateful that I had held on to that and it wasn't something that I had to recreate as a first year teacher. I also created this like sports vocabulary game for one of my classes and I was able to then use that with my students later on. So even if you think that you're not going to want it later or you think you're not going to need it, hold on to it because I guarantee at least some of it you will end up using. The same goes for any like hands-on materials that you create. I took a creative arts class when I was in college and we had to make a puppet at one point. I made a cow puppet and thought there's no way I'm ever going to use this in the classroom. But again, when I started teaching second grade, the cow puppet made a few appearances. I also took a children's literature class at one point and we had to read several children's novels or young adult novels and we had to keep a journal where we summarized what happened in the book and we kind of reflected on it. That was so useful when I started teaching reading in fourth grade because some of those books that I had read in college for that children's literature class, I ended up teaching in fourth grade. To be able to go back and reread that summary and reread some of my thoughts was extremely helpful. And again, these will be resources that you can pull from if and when you have to make a portfolio at the end of your college experience. Now, if you have digital files, I would recommend making a folder on Google Drive. Or if you have physical files, I personally kept mine all in a binder. Just make sure that you have a way to be able to look back on them. Tip number five is to start building a classroom library. When I was in college, I actually had the opportunity to hear Sharon Draper, which Sharon Draper is the author of the book Out of My Mind. She actually spoke at my college. And one of the things she said to us that has always stuck with me is that you you should have a classroom library regardless of the age level that you teach, regardless of the subject area. So even though right now I only teach math, science, and social studies, it is still so vital that I have a classroom library that my students can get books from. When I knew I was going to go into teaching, I started collecting books. And even then I had drastically underestimated how many books I would actually need to have a full classroom library. So any books that you can get your hands on, take them. Start asking family and friends if they have any books they want to get rid of. Start visiting yard sales where you can get books super, super cheap. Visit Goodwill where you can also get books pretty cheap and even check Facebook Marketplace. It's okay if you don't know exactly what grade level you're going to go into or what subject area you're going to teach. Regardless, you're going to have students on a variety of different levels. So it's helpful to have picture books and it's helpful to have chapter books and it's helpful to have books by a bunch of different authors and different genres. Just start collecting as many books as you can so that when the time comes, you at least have a starting place with your classroom library. Tip number six is to read as much as possible and attend as much PD as possible. I know you were probably thinking that you're super busy and just trying to balance your classes and maybe any field experience that you have is difficult enough. 
but I guarantee you, you are only going to get busier from here on out. You're going to get busier as you enter your student teaching. You're going to get even busier when you enter your first year of teaching. If I could go back to those early years in college, I wish I had spent so much more time reading different books, reading different research articles, attending professional development opportunities, because when you are early in college, that's when you have a lot of time. Now, granted, I, I was working a job. Okay, I also was in the education club. I also was training for marathons at the time. So I was busy, but I wasn't as busy as I would go on to become. Like I said, I got a lot busier during my student teaching and then I got even busier my first year of teaching. So take advantage of that free time that you do have, even though you think you don't have a lot, trust me, you have more than you think and use that time to your advantage so that you can read as much as possible and start getting professional development. In terms of where to find the books, I would definitely ask your professors if they have any recommendations. You can ask any mentor teachers that you work with if they have recommendations. I will leave a few of my favorite PD books down below, but you can also go online and find tons of opportunities for free PD. A lot of it is technology related or different seminars that you're able to attend for free. So go out, just start looking and find as many opportunities as you can. And my final tip is to be open to change. I remember when I first got in college, I was very driven and I knew exactly what grade level I wanted to teach. And lo and behold, that's not at all accurate. And I wish that I had been more willing to kind of explore other avenues when I was in college. When I went into it, I knew I wanted to teach second grade. And I actually went on to begin teaching second grade with my first teaching job, but I had no desire to teach upper elementary. And now that I teach fourth grade, I actually love it a lot more than I do teaching primary grades. So be open to change, be willing to try out different grade levels or try out teaching different subject areas. Even if you think it's not your jam, give it a try because once you actually try it, you might find that you like it a lot more than you thought you would. All right, that is it. Those are my top seven tips and pieces of advice for teachers in college. I hope this video was helpful for you. And if it was, please give the video a thumbs up. Go ahead and subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so you do not miss any future videos. I would love it if you would share out my channel with your other teacher friends. As always, thank you for watching. I love you all so much. Don't forget to put your positive pants on and I will catch you in the next one.